Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. This is your channel for photography, wildlife, and wildlife photography. And in today's photo basics video, we're talking all things aperture. You're gonna love this one right after this. Now in my photo basics series, I discuss some of the fundamental principles of photography. And in today's video, we're gonna touch on the concept of aperture, and I'm gonna show you exactly how this works. Now in these photo basics videos, they're really designed for beginner and intermediate photographers. And after the end of today's video, I promise you, you're gonna understand what aperture is, how it physically works, and where do all those numbers come from? Let's get started by just looking at a lens and talking about what aperture really is. It's just the opening. The definition of aperture is just an opening in an object. And if we look at this lens, you can see that you can see through and I wore a white shirt today smartly, you can see right through that lens. And that aperture or opening is created by a series of blades. So physically, the way this works is those blades will open and close to change the size of that opening in the middle of the lens. Now, I may refer to this often as a circle. You can see by the shape of it, it is not a perfect circle because in this case, those blades are not rounded blades. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. What we do want to understand is that that aperture controls the amount of light coming in. And it's pretty obvious when I make this demonstration. You'll see, as I turn a dial on the back of this old manual lens, I'm changing the aperture by making it smaller. And now I'm going to dial it the other way. And you can see the aperture is getting bigger until it becomes as open as it can be. Now, right now, if you, if you were listening to terms, you might hear a photographer say, shoot it wide open or open up your lens. This is what they mean, and you can physically see that it is open. In this case, it's as wide open as it can be. You may also hear the term, stop it down, or close down your lens. And when they talk about stopping it down, they're talking about moving that little opening and making it smaller and smaller. So physically, aperture is the opening. It's controlled by blades. Those blades open and close as we turn a dial in this case, or if you've got a modern electronic camera, it's probably going to do it through the body of the camera. And you've all seen those little values change when you change your aperture. Now in today's video, we're dealing mostly with light coming in. And you can see, again, the primary purpose of this change in aperture is to change the amount of light coming in. But it does a couple other things. It controls depth of field, which I'm going to talk about in a follow-up video. And it can control bokeh. And that bokeh or the out of focus elements in a, in a photograph can often be affected by the shape of those blades. Uh, by the way, in this particular lens, I think I've got seven blades. So this is a heptagon, that shape, it's not a complete circle. For purposes of this video, we're gonna pretend that that opening is a complete circle. So just bear with me, you'll see in the, in the middle of the video where that comes into play. Now I talked about what aperture is and I physically showed you what it looks like as it gathers light by getting bigger and smaller. But there is a formula associated with aperture that I just want to break down and I want to make this as simple as possible. I'll put the formula up here. Don't be intimidated. I know a lot of people see a formula and they run because they start thinking this is math. There's some math involved, but the math is very, very basic and I'll try to make it really, really easy for you. Aperture has a value associated with it. And we often refer to this as an f-stop value. And you've probably seen this on your camera. f2, f8, f2.8. We, we see these values and I just wanna show you what they mean. And I'm physically gonna show, I'm gonna show you right here with this lens. What does it actually stand for and how is it relevant? So let's just look at the formula. For this formula, we take the focal length and we divide it by the diameter of the opening in the, of the aperture. So let me just show you this real quick. 50 millimeter lens. We're going to make this one real easy. Focal length of 50 millimeters. Now, real quick, 50 millimeters is not the physical length of the lens from the back to the front. I did a video on focal length that explains this a little bit better. Uh, it's actually the point of the lens in the middle to the sensor. And when I say in the middle, there's something called a convergence point. That point does not have to be directly in the middle. It is generally somewhere in the middle, but it doesn't have to be. A quick example, uh, in my hand over here, I've got a 50 millimeter lens. If I show you this lens, it's about twice, three times as long. And you would assume this is a longer focal length, but it's not. This one's 25 millimeters. Even though it's half the focal length, it's much longer. And that's because 
that convergence point on this lens is probably much deeper into the lens. So when we look at that convergence point to the sensor, we get 25 millimeters. So quick point, focal length is not just determined by the length of the lens, it's the focal length that really matters. And because our formula involves focal length, we just need to remember that. Now the second part of that formula is the diameter. Let me open this up so you can see this. That diameter is determined by that aperture opening. You can see the diameter changing. Remember diameter, if I draw a circle over here, diameter is the distance all the way across the circle or twice the radius, the radius being the center to the outside. And so when I look at the diameter here, I can come up with a value. I can come up with what we're gonna call an f-stop value. So focal length divided by that opening gives me an f-stop value. And the reason we call it an f-stop value is because each of these, and I'll put a listing down here of the f-stop values. Now these are called full stops, and I, I, there are more than these. I'm just gonna put a few of them up here. What each of these represents is that focal length divided by the diameter, and I'm gonna put the diameter up there, and you can see if you work it that way, 50 divided by 25 gives you an f-stop value of two, 50 divided by 12.5 gives you an f-stop value of 4. We list these in stops because they are related to stops of light. As I, as I go down that chart and I go from f2 to f2.8, the value is one stop different. And a stop of light is a halving or doubling of the light from the previous stop. In this case, as my value goes up, it works backwards because it's actually a fraction. Uh, let me show you, this is at F2. And when I go from 2.8, it gets smaller. As I go up to F4, it gets smaller again. So as my F stops get larger, the diameter gets smaller and I let in less light. And each of those stops lets in half as much light as the stop before. One of the things that people get hung up on with aperture is that that doesn't make any sense when I look at those numbers. If you're telling me a stop of light is half, why am I going from 2 to 2.8? Because that's not double. You would expect if it was a stop, 2 to 4 would be half the light entering. But that's not the way it works. And the reason it doesn't work that way is because we don't deal with diameter. When we talk about this, we have to look at the area. In other words, the amount of light let in isn't just the size across, it's actually the whole circle. So I've got to figure out the area of that circle. Re remember, if I put a circle up here, there was an old equation we learned back in school called pi r squared. And this was to take the diameter, if we knew the diameter or the radius, and determine how big that circle is. That's what lets in light. It's the entire opening that lets in the light. So let's add a third column over here. And now look what happens. And I'm gonna round this area up on the end at F2, the diameter is 25, but the area is 500. And when I go down one stop of light, even though the diameter didn't get cut in half, the area did, and the area controls how much light is let in. Therefore, we have these stops established. Two, 2.8, four, 5.6 on my chart. And you'll notice on each of those stops, the area has decreased by one half from the stop before it. Does that make sense now? Does that all start to come together? So changing those stops of light changes the area, and because it's relative to focal length, the area at the same aperture might not be the same size. Now this one's pretty easy to understand. Let me open both lenses up. I'm gonna show you two lenses here. I've got this one set to 2.8. If I turn it around backwards, looks a little bit bigger, and that's because these lens magnify a little bit. There we go. Now, let me take this 25 millimeter lens, and at 2.8, the 50 millimeter lens should have an area of 250 millimeters, but the 25 millimeter lens is gonna be much smaller. Oh, look at that. Really, really small. Now, that lens is probably uh, skewing the size of that a little bit, it's probably making it a little bit smaller, but the area of this lens is much different. So I'll put the, the math on the side 
the same f-stop, but because they're different focal lengths, the actual opening is different. Let me show you one more, and I'm not going to pull this one all the way out, but I'm going to show you my 300 millimeter lens. This is also at 2.8. The opening in that, you won't see it, is almost as big as this entire thing. Remember that. This one, 2.8, tiny. This one, 2.8, huge. Because it's all relative to the size of the lens. So the larger the lens, at the same aperture, the different openings will be evident. And I'll put a list up there. I'll put these three up there and you can see them compared to each other. And when I, when I do this, a lot of people start to think, well, that 300 gathers way more light. And in, in theory, it does, but it doesn't get all of that light from the front of the lens back to the sensor. So when we talk about aperture, it is important to understand that even though the openings will be different with different focal lengths, what will not change is the exposure. Think of exposure as the amount of light that hits the sensor, just the amount of light. It is controlled by shutter speed and aperture and the ambient light that's already out there for you to use. But in the camera, we control it by shutter speed and aperture. One would assume that if the opening of that 300 lens is so big that it's getting way more light. And if I took two pictures and one image I, I produced with this tiny little opening and one image I produced with that giant opening, that that image should be way brighter, but it isn't. In fact, I'll put an example up here for you. The top one is shot with a 50 millimeter lens at 2.8 and the bottom one is shot with a 400 millimeter lens at 2.8. Now, even though the, the field of view is vastly different and the images look different, what's not different is the exposure. They have the same brightness. If you look at them, one is not incredibly brighter and the other one's not really, really dark. And you would expect because one opening was this big and one opening was that big, that that should be much darker. In my head, I have an easy way to think about this. And I, I think of it like a tunnel. If I have a really long tunnel and it has a really big opening at the beginning, but I'm standing at the other end of the tunnel, the light that comes through that tunnel isn't going to be very bright anymore, right? It's a really long tunnel. So even though it's got a really big opening, the light at the end of the tunnel and think of the end of the tunnel where the sensor is, the light at the end of the tunnel isn't going to be that bright anymore. But if I've got a really short tunnel and think of the end of that tunnel as a sensor, but it's a short tunnel. Even though the size of the opening is very small, the amount of light hitting that sensor is going to be fine. So it all, it's all relative to the, the length of the lens. So one of the things that's important to understand is as long as the aperture is the same, it doesn't matter the focal length, it doesn't matter big lens, small lens, the aperture will be the same exposure regardless of the length of the lens. And I hope that made sense it's because that's my video for you today. Now, before you sign out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recap what I did today. Put little check marks in your head next to the ones we got right, the ones that you understand. I want you to understand basically what, what aperture is, but I want you to understand that it controls three things. In this video, we talked mostly about it controlling light, but it does also control depth of field and bokeh for another video coming up as a follow-up to this one. I want you to understand physically that aperture is made of blades that make the opening larger or smaller, and in that process, the blades could be constructed differently. They could have different numbers of blades or even different shapes. And the number and shapes of those blades will affect other things, but they don't usually affect the amount of light coming in. That's going to be established by the diameter, but really it's established by the area of the opening. So as we have this simple formula for aperture, I want you to understand that it relates to the focal length, and the diameter of the opening, that's how the formula is determined. The amount of light coming in is really determined by the area of that opening. And remember, anytime we talk about focal length with lenses, we're not talking about the physical length of the lens. We're talking about where the light comes into the lens and converges. And from that point to the sensor, that's the focal length. I think it's critical to understand what a stop of light really is and how it relates to aperture. So I hope you took away that a stop of light is doubling or having of the light that enters the camera.
in the case of aperture, that doubling or halving is the area of the light that's coming in. So as we move our f-stops and we change our f-stops and we go one full stop up or one full stop down, we are doubling the area or halving the area, the actual opening, not the diameter, which is based off how the formula is determined, but the area, the overall size of the opening, that's what doubles or halves the light coming in. So I hope you took that away from this video. And finally, I want you to understand that aperture is aperture is aperture regardless of focal length. The amount of light coming in established by the aperture will be the same. So if the aperture is consistent regardless of the focal length, the exposure will be the same regardless of that focal length. Now, if all of that made sense for you in the video today, I want you to go down and hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed because while I do these photo basics videos, I've got a lot of other wildlife content on this channel. And I think you're really, really gonna enjoy all of the content. Hit the bell for notifications. That'll let you know when my next weekly video is out and stay tuned for a follow-up on Aperture where I talk about things like depth of field and bokeh. Now, I appreciate you tuning in for this one. I hope to see you next week. And as always, I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.